Hello and welcome to Omron's quick tip video series. Okay, so what we're doing in this video is we're trying to figure out why our SQL connection doesn't work. So there's a couple of tools here that we can use. One is right here. If you right click, go to the monitor table, that brings up this window. You'll notice that there is a column for each connection so that there there can be up to three columns tells you when the ladder program created a connection disconnected uh, by date and time this is basically letting you know if your connection is stable or maybe you've got power outages um, how many times you were able to do a normal execution how many errors there was if you're looking for one piece of missing data an hour maybe you'll find it here uh, the spool, of course, is where the data goes if if, if there's a disconnection to the uh, SQL server. Um, you have one gig of data for all your connections. Uh, and, of course, the last status of whatever happened. Another tool is right here. You have three logs. Um, you can enable and disable them. You can uh, specify how many records and how big they get. That's personal preference. But what you do need to know is right here. This is what's in the three logs. The execution log lets you know when you created connections, when you tried to log. That would basically be for the um, NJ programmer. He wants to know if the connection started or stopped or why it was lost. That's where he will find it. The debug log is basically when you're trying to figure out why you've lost a record. Because this tells you when you had an insert, the exact time. So if you're building a part every 10 seconds, you'd expect to see something here every 10 seconds. That's what that's good for. This log is better for um, talking to the SQL Server people because it tells you when you tried to do something, but it also tells you the command that we use to send the data and the error. For for instance here we had a null in one of our variables and the database was set up not to accept the null in that variable. Um, we tried to do a select where the, um, the selection specification didn't make any sense. Um, here <clears throat> this one's quite could be quite popular if the field is let's say a barcode and we expect every record to be unique in this particular case we tried to send two pieces of data with the same barcode that triggers a unique constraint um, violation inside the SQL server so this one is much more useful for the SQL server people if you go here and hit the online settings you can force the service to start up in a specific mode. Operation mode is normal. Test mode is when you just send data to the SD card because the SQL server doesn't exist. You can stop the service. You can shut down the service. There is also a ladder instruction to shut down the service. If you know you're going to shut down power to the NJ, it is advisable to shut down your SQL service and your connections. Uh, this way you will, it greatly reduces the chances that you'll lose data, especially if you have a long timeout and it's shutting down and the data is never sent. It won't log the data internally to the FIFO because it never had time to, to uh, time out before you lost power. You can also start and stop your debug log. Another one is monitoring the DB connection service. 
Um, pretty straightforward. How many queries? How many errors? Pretty straightforward. One last thing, under the DB connection settings, you can clear the spool data. I'm not entirely sure why you would do this, but maybe during startup, if you've logged a lot of data while the machine's not really running correctly, clearing spool data would, would help. One last point. When you run the debug log, and this is why it doesn't auto start sometimes, the service time is considerably longer because it has to log to the memory card every time it sends data to the SQL server. Um, typical testing here has shown the uh, SQL server to take a, a insert data in about 20 milliseconds. The debug log seems to at least double that.